Welcome back to Metal Lords. We're going to kick off exactly where we left it last time, solving a few wood issues, barely getting on top of our food, and readying ourselves to build a church. Let's begin. We start with 10 stone, which is the perfect amount to build a church, so kindly you don't need to set up a way to mine and use that to get the church online initially. And of course the 20 planks, which I've just ticked over. Thank you, Plank Man. Uh, let's find a nice spot for a church, shall we? And get these people uh, the faith that they deserve, I suppose. Get rid of that rogue there with Alt-Click. And that will allow me to place down the church across the road from these houses. Or maybe across the road from the, the excessively large marketplace down here. <laughs> I'd really like to get a manor online too, but one thing at a time. Bam. Church online. Of the highest priority, please. Get building it. In fact, it's such a high priority. We could probably say, hey, you don't need to do planks. Uh, the forester probably can take a bit of a break from foresting. Let's get someone back on logging so we don't completely run out. And I think we're just making enough fuel to keep us going. Food? Borderline, but it seems to be bouncing around five months. So that should be okay. And now the people are frantically running over to build the church. Hallelujah, they're shouting as they finally get this thing online. Jumping into the little help tool here, which does look quite helpful, gotta say. Families will join if there's enough space and approval. If it, approval is 75%, we'll get two a month. If it's 50%, we'll only get one. And if it drops below 25%, people will leave. Families may also turn to banditry if public order is low. Very cool. Very cool. Don't worry, everybody. You're going to be stoked soon, I promise. We'll be able to find 2% more approval out of you. Oh god, winter is approaching, but in good news, drop the speed down, the church is done. Huzzah. Sound the bells! <laughs> oh, we could assign somebody to work it. I'm not sure if we actually need to do that, though, to have it providing a benefit or not. Let's have a look. No, we don't. Bam. Church. Online. They now have water access at a church, and quite mixed access to food, though, with only three months in supply. Oh dear. There is a berry deposit way the hell up here that we could have gathered. It's seasonal, it's probably not worth trying to get now, but in future, probably the fastest way and easiest way for this growing little hamlet would have been to do that. As another temporary solution, I could lower the hunting limit here. I lower it down to six, it won't leave them with a lot of wild animals to spare. Um, but we might be able to surge a little bit more food out of it. There's still space in the pantry for extra food as we potentially approach some dangerous seasons. Hooray! <laughs> Finally, as I cast my eyes up the top during yet another storm, approval is at 52%, thanks to the buff of the church. And that means, finally, as we just talked about before, this place is going to start to grow, albeit slowly, at one extra family a month, but I think we can handle that. Alright, let me assign some wheat here, 58%. Eh, it's alright. We can do crop rotation in future seasons to maybe bounce through each thing. But I see we have plowing, sowing, growth, and then harvest. And at least if we get a bit of wheat, grain, flour, bread, I mean, who doesn't like a bit of medieval bread and meat? <laughs> it's... Cold meat sandwiches for everybody. Although they do have fireplaces, so maybe maybe they can actually cook it. I should give them some credit. These people are not stupid. As the snow starts to settle in. Three months supply of food. <laughs> but 16 months worth of fuel. So at least they'll be warm and just very hungry. And it's not helped by the fact that bandits keep raiding me and taking everything. The settlement either needs more food or fuel check supplies. Yeah, well, that's because bandits just came and took a whole load of meat right at the start of winter. Are you kidding me? Ay, ay, ay. I'm literally, literally just sitting here holding my breath because we're running out of food. And I'm thinking, dang, I really should have built a farm a little bit earlier on. However, in good news, we are actually starting to grow, right? You can see now we have six level one families. And obviously space for 10 of them. So I overexpanded a little bit too much. But who's going to complain about that? 
It might also be a good idea to start thinking about other needs, like clothes, as these people literally walk around freezing their backsides off. Um, and now that we are starting to pick up more families, more workers, uh, we can also start to, of course, gain extra jobs. I don't want to stretch myself too thin, because I would like to get the bread, but pasture, sheep farm, seems like a good idea to me. Let's pop the sheep somewhere away, because who wants to live right next door to a bunch of stinky sheep? So, sorry, sheep fans. Uh, so let's pop it down all the way down here, I reckon. Quite a large plot. Good stuff. And then get the sheep farm building. I was hoping to get it across the road. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it across that road. That's all good. Right. I'll leave you to that as you <laughs> almost to starve, but just managed to feed ourselves. I've had to drop the hunting limit quite low. We do have a little bit of extra meat there. Food stall, bit of meat. People generally refueled and seem to be working okay. Once we can get that clothing, the sheep, linen, yarn, we should be all right. Of course, there'll be probably other ways to get that too. Some upgrades are also starting to become available. Like the stable here, where we can now order another ox to help us move stuff around, or maybe a horse. Got some space. Let's order an ox. <laughs> Why not? It'll help our logistics out a bit, right? Because the dudes use them to, you know, haul the big logs across the, the town or whatever. So might provide a bit of extra efficiency. It might also eat some of our food. Please let me get through this winter. <laughs> the people are really happy though, so... It's something. Speaking of the ox, here it comes. Better late than never. I've decided I'm going to set up a forager hut here anyway. I know it's quite a long walk to the berries. Uh, and they're seasonal, so I can't grab them just yet. But next month we will actually be able to because it's February, which I believe is the end of the Northern Hemisphere's winter. So once we make it through, we'll just send a couple of dudes out to quickly grab some berries and feed the people. Resource stolen, one meat, because that was all they could find <laughs> to steal. <laughs> oh, you bandits. I guess that would be the upside to hiring some mercenaries, wouldn't it? 60 bucks. The cheap ones are gone. Oh, and we just can't afford it. Okay. <laughs> we could train some as well. I don't really like that idea, though. I still think we're just a bit low on everything. Let's focus on growth. <laughs> he says with no food. <laughs> There isn't seemingly an indicator of when the season is done, but as you can see, the snow is starting to lift. So I'm guessing that February here is about to disappear. Seasonal resources are gone, firewood consumption has doubled and the lack of it might cause freezing. But as we move through to spring, it'll be frequent rain and seasonal deposits will start to regrow. However, the crops won't grow until the summer and won't be harvested until autumn. So we're looking at, I'm guessing about 200 days on this field. You've got mail. Who's it from? We've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the lands. Should we trace their steps? Uh, okay. <laughs> We've got a year to prepare. That's fine. We'll be totally fine because it's March. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to run over to the forager's hut here and slam three dudes onto that. Uh, I think I'm going to drop one person from this camp. It's been hunted down pretty low. I'm going to raise the limit back up to eight. Allow that to recover a bit. While we hopefully throw every single person we've got. Literally every single one. I'm going to take the dude off logs as well. We don't need those right now. We've got plenty of fuel. Got enough fuel for a year. So we don't need to worry about logs. Let's get four dudes. Four families, I should say. Quickly converted to <laughs> foragers. And then they're going to make this horrendously long trek up to the corner here where there's currently no berries because they're still growing okay quick rewind i'll come back to that in a minute we can probably also turn to trade this will bring merchants in livestock trading will allow us to bring sheep in as well we probably want both of these buildings online i'm going to put them down toward this side of town and bam, get those working. It'll at least give us another option, should we want to use it. 
Place continues to grow. I have three unassigned families. So let me put one of them back on the logging camp. I might put one on the forester's hut just for a little bit as well. Livestock trading post is online. Probably gonna want some sheep, yeah? Export import price is 20 bucks. Goodness. Okay, let's import two sheep. And and then they will create a dynasty of sheep. A family is hungry. No shite. <laughs> I know they are. I'm so sorry. It looks like the snow may have cleared. I am still getting the uh, this error up here, though, that they can't find any berries. Which means that the berries... Oh, the berries are growing. All right. It could just be a range issue in that case. I'll give it an unlimited work area. It's connected to a road network. Dits. <laughs> hey, dits. Dits is just casually strolling to go and get some berries. Never mind Dits, the fact... <laughs> Never mind the fact that everybody at home is starving. You just take your sweet time, buddy. All hands on D-E-C-K. Get into the forager's hut. We'll cut down the forester's hut. Or cut down the workers who are working on it, I should say. So that all four dudes can get on here. Where's an extra dude who's just standing around doing nothing? Logs. Who needs them? Get to work, everybody. It's berry time. Okay, let's actually watch them. Unassigned families needed to construct the trading post. That's fine. We'll ignore that for now. People are making their way down this road. Up here. <laughs> Along this winding path. Through some trees. And eventually, they'll end up at this berry deposit. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Zooming out a bit here and looking at the map view, I see we have old uh, Hildebolt von Watts's face, but we also have the outlaws. We could say, yet another dog has crawled here, or it's a pleasure to meet you. Let's try and woo them with nice words. It's a pleasure to meet you, outlaws. All right, back to work. Okay, the trading post is online, and this might also be my saving grace, so I'm going to quickly hit pause and take a look at what's going on here. So we could order a horse for it. Might be a good idea. We don't yet have one. Maybe I didn't need two ox. After all. <laughs> and we get military commodities, materials, food, and crops. Okay, so if we go crew, uh, food, we've got import, export. So we could also start producing, like, some stone or something. And exporting it out of here because we don't need it. But for the time being, we definitely need some food. Current surplus, two. Okay. Let's import up to a desired surplus of ten food. The food stall is now up and running in the market. And berries are actually starting to come in. I'm so excited about some stupid berries. This may very well be the turning point for us. In terms of food generation, bandits still stealing from me, stealing my hides. I don't really have much of a use for them now. Ah, there we go. Everybody can breathe a sigh of relief. These mining camps are dirt cheap. I might as well build them. We have uh, a deposit up here. No deposit in range. Hello. Oh, I see. I'm a noob. You, <laughs> you literally have to build it right on top. Of course. <laughs> Oh, man. What a dummy. Okay. There's your road. There's your pit. Get both of those online. If we don't intend to use them, we could maybe trade them and actually start to generate some kind of wealth. Personal money collected from taxes can be used for diplomacy, hiring mercenaries, and settling new regions. There's a royalty tax, influence, which will allow us to claim new regions, and the king's favor. And I currently have none of any of those things. We don't have enough funds for import on the trading post, so the route that I set up earlier, probably a waste of time. Likewise, I think if I put somebody on here, they might struggle to get the sheep in as well. I'll see what happens. I'll put somebody on there. Funny looking lambs. I'll put somebody on there. But I don't think it's going to work. We also need unassigned families for construction. 
We don't have any at the moment. As we tick over the next month, we should get another one, though. For the time being, I'll remove the logger. I think we still have enough logs. I think I'm going to get another field online, again, in the guise of somehow planning for the future, instead of letting my people suffer. So let's get one Morgan. Oh, that's quite a big Morgan. Do I want linen or barley? Probably linen. So we'll get it to swap to flax, and then swap back to wheat. So it'll go wheat, flax, wheat. And then this one will go wheat, uh, barley, wheat. <laughs> and just get a shite load of wheat. Good. Okay. Uh, oh, that's crazy. We have only one dude on here. But I still actually, because we're growing one family each month, I have a little bit to play with. So let's move that up to two. Make sure that I don't completely neglect this in favor of sending people on a half mile journey to gather some berries from the middle of nowhere. This field on the bright side is actually starting to grow. Crop growth about 11%. Got it on a high priority. We're 94 days away. And we're 200 days away from an attack. So they won't be able to steal that. Now, because that's coming online fairly quickly, I'm going to want to get the windmill and probably the communal oven as well. They're fairly cheap. Six timber between them. We should be fine. I might put it maybe out the back of the church. Kind of cute. Could be kind of annoying though, couldn't it? If you're trying to worship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll put it down with the actual farms. That'll look nice. Let's slot it right there. And then the oven probably doesn't need to be down with the farms. That could be a little bit of a fire hazard. We'll slot it in this week out. Cool. Uh, we don't currently have any free families to construct it. So I might want to try and pinch somebody from somewhere. We're not making logs. Three dudes on berries. Can I take somebody off this now? It just takes them such a long time. Ringing the dinner bell. Bring the berries home. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a dude off there so that we can get someone constructing and hopefully that doesn't bite me in the backside. Animals are still doing okay. Hunting limit. I'll reduce it to eight so that they can keep chopping. And yes, okay, we are actually starting to build up a little bit of food now. Cool. I wonder if I could sell some of these hides. I'm not using them. I might not use them for a little while. Let's have a look. So, crops, food, materials. I guess it's a material. Yes, indeed. Let's export hides with a desired surplus of... I probably don't really want that many, do I? Because I'm not using them. We'll just go five, just in case we need some. Export price, four. Established trade route. It's going to cost me 48 bucks to do it. Dang it. I do have two spare families, and I'm not currently constructing anything. So let's put one of them to work in the mines, and one of them to work on stone. And we can at least gather up some hopefully useful materials. Of course, we're probably going to want iron from the mines when it comes to training our own army. We'll likely need it. But I'm also, I've am also i also still got that idea in the back of my head that we might be able to just trade some stuff away and make a bit of extra cash. Instead of trading away those hides from earlier, I might build a tannery. We can probably at least temporarily put somebody on it. Maybe get a little bit of leather. Of course, the big thing that I'm missing are families to do the construction work. Yikes. Uh, but no, the actual big thing that my people are missing are clothes. And we won't be able to upgrade these plots to level 2, and therefore we won't be able to upgrade to a small village until we complete the clothing stall supply. Linen, wool, or leather. So I'll use some of the hides that I've got to temporarily create some leather, therefore completing this requirement. Of course, moving forward, I need to make sure that I can either get my sheep or grow some linen from fields. Hey, speaking of fields. Hey, oh, <laughs> we're going to have a shite load of wheat. All right, berry dudes. Don't bother. Complete waste of your time. Instead, I'm going to get you to jump into this windmill both of them yeah sure we'll chuck both of them in there and then once they've milled a whole load of it we'll send them over to the oven uh, and get them cooking in fact i could chuck someone there now but i'm not going to as i was saying i'm going to put the extra dude onto the tannery i believe we still have our hides yes no maybe we have seven they're probably getting stolen all of the time <laughs> but look at our wheat grow 100 Yes! We're not gonna starve next winter! 
Oh, great success. Okay, thinking ahead a little bit though, if we're getting all of this wheat and milling it here at the mill, seems to be working. Tannery is going to produce just the tiniest bit of leather for us. We're going to need more fuel, right? Because we're going to need to cook all this stuff up. So I also can't completely turn my back on our firewood supplies at the moment though. Pretty good. Pretty good. And look at them go, everybody. The poor little peasants run to chuck the wheat underneath this raised mill. It's now finally converting grain into flour. And with but one dude over here in the communal oven, who's entirely in charge of feeding the entire town, we're getting bread online, baby. On hindsight, it is actually probably worth keeping one dude on the forester hut, just so that we can keep the variety of food. Because looking in here, I think we do need two types. However, meat and bread to make those sammies should be enough. I'll leave a dude there just in case for now, because we're not actively constructing anything. So I don't need to have anybody unassigned necessarily, I don't I don't think, anyway. Our popularity is surging. The most popular manor lord there is, thanks to market food variety now, clothing variety, and the church level. Huzzah! And we can upgrade, finally, our people to level two as well. It'll cost four logs, so I'll probably need to get some dude chopping those again. These plots will generate one regional wealth per family per month. Their needs will also increase, so this uh, popularity that I'm celebrating could be a little short-lived. But let me upgrade as many as I can while I can, because it doesn't, we don't actually have the clothes, right? We're just sort of tricking them into thinking that they've got clothes, temporarily. The thing that I was really missing was flax. Flax seems, <laughs> now, nah, like a super obvious thing that I should have targeted from early on, just to get the clothes online so these people aren't walking around in the noony woony. Uh, unfortunately, a little bit late. I've added a field here that will be flax flax. This one's going to be, and this one is going to be wheat again. Okay, let's get one more. I was going to change that one, but it's kind of just robbing Pete to pay Bill, uh, or however the saying goes. There isn't, you know, there isn't really a great benefit to doing that. Let me get, I think, an extra road down. Can we squeeze it inside of the mill? No, we can't. It's going to sort of awkwardly loop around it, but that's okay. Bring it down like that. Leave a little as aesthetic gap. Okay. And run it along there. And then I might put another one maybe out the back here, actually, now that I've placed that road. That looks like a slightly better idea. And Morgan, there's a 1.1. Thank you kindly. Let's get this one on flax. Crop rotate it into wheat. And then back to flax again. So this will be the main flax production center. I'll chuck it up onto high priority think we should probably have more people in here too. Loads of wheat waiting to be milled. Nothing being milled. <laughs> and nothing being cooked. Zooming out and having a look at the map, I can see some dudes running around. Whoa, that was an unexpectedly large zoom. Look at them go. <laughs> oh man. I don't think they're coming to me. So I'll let that slide. Let's get, let's get back, in, back into our nice safety of barely any food bill. Construction complete and settlement level increased. Yes, here's the level two plot. Our tavern supply is now required, so we're going to need to make some ale. Our farms will be able to help us with that, of course. We'll have the basic resource needed. Let's jump in and level up and take a really careful think about, do I want to lean into animals? Double the amount of meat harvested by hunters and butchers. Goat pens? Uh, hunters collect hides from traps? Hmm. That, that could solve my clothing problem. Uh, I do note that foreign supplies, suppliers I should say, could have been pretty useful to me early on as well. Sheep breeding. Sheep grazing on pastures slowly multiply. We'll need that once we actually get the sheep in here. I'm not sure I quite need it yet though. Apples will take too long to grow at three years. I think I'm going to go for the heavy plow. A new upgrade, plowing station, which enables employing oxen at the farmhouse to increase our production. And some other stuff around it. Let's do that. Um, because I am kind of going all in on the wheat play. We've got five dudes working here now, which is reasonable. And for the low, low price of but one log, we can upgrade this farmhouse. Very good. 
Uh, I'm of course going to need some dudes to actually work it though. I also note that I need more housing. We only have 12 spaces. This is uh, potentially a big oversight because without the extra houses, I won't be growing and then we won't be able to keep this gravy train rolling. So I'm going to need to probably place down, why do I keep tabbing through a million things, residential, uh, some more plots. I guess we just chuck them in behind these ones. If we give them some slightly larger backyards, they'll be upgradable. They'll be able to have their own wee farms and stuff like that when they reach level two. This is what I mean by the upgrade. When you're placing it down, I think when it shows this little bit, it means that they can have things like gardens and those other things that you might have caught a quick glimpse at when we were looking through one of these houses over here. Okay, it's starting to get cold again as we move into the next winter. I've got to say, got a lot of wheat. Haven't managed to get a lot of bread out of it yet, though. We have some food. Just a little bit. A little bit of meat there. A province is being claimed and I can resolve it on the battlefield or not do anything else. Looks like I have to just ignore that for now, then. And with 81 days until our next attack... A region being claimed and winter setting in, I think it's probably a good time to end this video here. Thank you so much for joining me for this first look at Manalords. I intend to carry on, provide more maybe of this gameplay, turn it into a mini-series, or perhaps some broader videos. There's a lot to uncover. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.